Hello everyone, my name is Tasker. Today I'm going to be making a tutorial on the GUI in Unity. Now, we're going to start with the basics and we're going to work our way up. But for now I'm just going to show you just an element or two working in Unity. And this stuff here has been prepared and getting ready to build our own little sliders. So I'm showing you this element working, which is my bar. And we're going to be covering how to make this happen. I'm also going to be covering the other element, which is this energy bar going up and down. But what it will be is how to transform the slider to the way you want it to transform and the way you want it to work. So let's get started with where you're going to be starting from when you actually start making something. So as you probably already see, this here is been prepared pre and before you guys actually get to see this video and started. But anyway, let's talk about this for a moment. So we're making a GUI and we want to come up with a basic design. Now, this isn't what I'm going to use for a GUI for my personal usage, but for showing use, we're going to use this. So what am I aiming to do? First of all, I just put a bunch of pictures together and come up with a concept of what I want. Once I've got a bit of a concept, I can lower the opacity of this layer and I can go and get some nice shapes no matter what it is and start designing some new elements or other. Be sure to make sure you're on the right layer because this tends to happen a lot and you may be choosing the wrong layer for the application you want to use it on. Transform it the way you want it. Nice and neatly. And you have one of your images. So, I want to go a bit above and beyond with this one. I, just, I don't want to have just one. I want to have two. And the reason I'm going to use two is you actually get to find out very soon when we actually get to put this together why do I want two? Well, the basic concept behind this is I want two because I want to show you what I can do within that area that's not happening with anything that's not been done. So that's been done now. What we're going to do next is we're going to add the other elements. I could always make any of these shapes any shape I want. Now if I don't like the size and it's a bit too coarse or too thick or whatever, I can just turn it down and move it about to wherever I want. When I'm happy, I can stop and then I can decide to make another image. Now I'm going to use the shapes that are already here and add new pieces. Now this is not going to cover every aspect of Unity's slider and health system. So I'm going to kind of cover the basics of things that some people probably have been trying to do or trying to understand but don't understand just quite yet. Personally I'm still a rookie with this stuff but I've gotten to a level where it's something I can tell that some people will struggle with for sure. Now with this, if I want to place these exactly in line rather than have them a distance apart, like so, and I want them to be perfectly aligned, I can always draw a guidance line on the rear layer and follow that line. But for now, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to change my tolerance to grab as much as possible of this element. Control C, Control V, move it about. And then I can line it up. Count one. Two, three, four, five. Then be happy with that. And I can select it again using the magic tool. Control C. And now I can go press M in my program. Control C. Control V. And move it about the way I want. Sorry, like I said, I'm not a professional. Then we count one, two, three four, five. And they should be about the same set distance apart. 
to be able to turn that off and everything to be the, the way I want it. So now we have these basics, what is next? Well, you might want to start adding details to these to make them look pretty and nice. So what you'll do, depending on which ones you want to work on first, is you'll select your bars and figure out how you're going to transform them and how you're going to make them look good. What colors, what sch color schemes, and just go to your new layer that you've just made and be like choosing your colors. Now, I don't know why the color option isn't here, but it's now here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a bunch of random colors. I'm going to choose purple, and I'm going to use that on one of the squares. Then I'm going to choose... I'm going to leave it as purple. I'm going to choose this box here. I'll transform that and make that green. I'm going to pick the star, and because stars are yellow or white, I'm going to make it one of the two colors. In fact, I might actually make this pure white. Then I'm going to go to these bars here. I'm going to make them green or blue or in between and just paint them that same color. And I'll just leave one odd and change that to something else. Red. Or we could make it yellow, depending on what color scheme you're actually looking for. This bar here represents health in my eyes, but I'm going to make that a dark blue. But you should really go for lighter colors and not dark colors as you'll find out in a minute when we start doing some transforms. Then I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to put a light gray on this, very light. Then the outside one I'm going to make a little bit darker. So now we've got a basic scheme here that looks okay I guess it doesn't have anything fancy about it, it's just normal blank so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take my magic tool I'm gonna select the ones I want on this layer but because of my tolerance is a bit high it won't let me just select what I wanna select so now I've selected what I wanna select so far and because they're similar shapes and in a similar location I should be able to just go to my effects, go to my gauge and blur effect, and I should be able to transform them as I want to. So I'll just turn it up a little bit more than that. And now we have some really realistic 3D looking bars. Now the way it works is if you turn off the back layer, it will look terrible. Because of the opacity, it's going to that rear layer and making it look a little bit more fancy. This is what you'll do for just about everything you do. But with the Gaussian Blur, on dark colors, it doesn't look as great. It does work, but not as effectively as you'd want it to work. And if you really wanted a nice effect, you'd want to redraw that line to be a lot thinner. You can see it close up that it actually does work. And the further away you are, it looks less and less realistic. But I'm going to just let you decide. I feel like it's actually looks good for the um, color scheme that I've chosen so far. So throughout all of your effects, depending on what you want to make, you're going to transform them with the Gaussian Blur effect. And you can just about repeat it for every single one of these. Now with the white one, I'm just going to go to the Gaussian Blur and transform it how I want to. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to choose these all. And I'm going to go to the Gaussian Blur effect again and make them sync up. So they look okay or good. And I'm happy with that. So now, from a distance away, it looks really, really nice. But the darker the color, the less great effect you're going to get. But there is a slight trick you can actually pull to change what the colors are going to look like in the end. Say, for example, these colors here, if they don't look so good, I can just go add a new layer, go to my white, go to the paint bucket, and add a white layer behind them. Now, they look pretty shabby, if you ask me. Then what I can do is I can unselect, and I don't like to look at this. So what I can do then to control it, so I can turn it up and down to a point that I might actually like. Now, if this doesn't work, you can always 
you know, cancel and put this layer above. Now, it does look terrible. So if I turn it down, I can find a level which suits it, or if it doesn't suit it at all, I can just leave it alone. I can always play with my settings and effects that I've been given to find something that actually works. If nothing works, I can just ignore it, and I can just turn this layer off and move it to the very back. You don't want to delete that stuff just in case it comes in handy later on and you decide, I want to use this or that. Okay, so now that we have our basic layout, we can then start figuring out what we'll do from there. And by figuring this out, you want to transform it to the size of what it is. So find the highest points and transform it to those positions. You just go all the way around and transform it. And there's my transform position. Now you've got to ignore the corners. They are fine. Now what I'll do is I'll save this as the tutorial GUI that I've set up already. As the base foreground. And I'd like to actually note that I like putting underscores there. And then changing the first letter of the next word to a capital because this underline makes it seem a little bit more professional. Now we can always just go edit or image and find the cropped selection and then we have about a, uh, a base ground that we can use. I can save it again and this is what I'm going to be using for the rest of the tutorial. What I'll do now is I'll go to my background which is black. The black is the key to everything and you do not want to edit this layer in any way unless you plan on changing anything above because if we turn on the above and we disable the below it just makes it look shabby and not very nice anymore. You need that black layer to always stay the same. That is why it's a key element in your creative arts or whatever elements you want to make. So, what do I want to do now? Well, for one, I'm going to select all these boxes here. I could always select these other ones and start designing them. But I could always, always, always add the background if I want to. But I'm not going to use the background for anything other than a background. And I'm going to use a different effect. It's not going to look that great unless I have it just a bland color because it will make it look a lot better with a bland color than more advanced color. But we can transform that later. So this is going to be our health system. And what you should do is you shouldn't actually do anything as a group unless it is a group of objects you plan on transforming together. And then what you're going to go do is you're going to add a new layer and we're just going to call this the energy because I already have an energy system set up and that's going to be the energy. The outline here, I'm going to use that as another kind of energy based on what I have in my project that I've been building for the past five weeks. So what we're going to do on this new layer called energy, make sure we selected it, is we'll just turn on the layer free and we're going to figure out what colors we are going to use in what locations. So what I'll do is I'll get my tool and this is my tools. And I'm going to just choose a basic color and potentially just change it to a nice color to match what it is. So there's my basic colors and they look really, really nice, really professional, don't they? Well, let's take this to another level. Remember that thing I told you about, don't delete your black lines? Well, now we can use them again or we could use a different color such as white and transform it to be brighter colors. Then we can go to our energy layer and when we go to the blurs we can turn on the Gaussian blur, turn it up and transform it the way we want. Now to be honest black tends to work the best I reckon. This doesn't look as great as black. So what I can do Go back to this layer, click black, and color them black. 
They look a bit shabby now because I did the Gaijin Blur too soon. So go back here. We'll set to black. We'll go back to the energy, the effects, and we'll go to the blurs, Gaijin Blur, and transform it. Now this is just way too much. So what we'll do is we'll transform it to something that looks really nice and neat. And I'm going to say this looks really good. Might not be perfect, but it looks solid. It looks like something that's going to work. And you're going to expect your QE to be a lot smaller, and you're going to want it to be noticeable. So you notice that there's a color inside. It's basic color on the middle, and it's a nice change on the outside edges. What we're going to do next is going to take the energy bars that are on the other layer, and we're going to make sure we rename this one that's called layer 2 our do not change layer. And like I said, it looks a lot more professional when you have the underlines because then you have the spaces. When you have spaces, it sometimes does not like it in some programs. That's why you do want to do what you do. So what we can do with this energy is we can merge it down if we really want to. And that's what I'll do. Then it will keep the effects that we want. In some cases it won't work. And this is going to be called energy. Next one we're going to do is a health, which isn't actually going to transform. And what we'll do for the health bar is we'll do the black, like I said before, get the paint bucket, paint it, add another layer, and we're going to make this layer red. Now this is going to be an okay color scheme, but it, it's your choice what you want to do for your color scheme. This is just random stuff that we're doing. And you're going to transform this depending on what you like and what you prefer. I think I like this enough. I'll just remove the texture and there's my health bar. If I move this above, you'll see that that's your basic layer. You merge this down, it becomes your health bar. So I'm going to let this stay health. I'm happy with that. Then we're going to do another one here. Like most of the time, I said you're going to be just basically uh, using the Gaussian Blur. You're going to be using the Do Not Change, and it's going to be selecting your areas. Now, the thing I forgot to mention is actually you do want the base background to be black for when you texture new elements. So if I get the paint bucket, first thing I'll do is I'll paint black. I would prefer to change it to another color, but black seems to be the way to go in these circumstances. Then what I'll do is I'll get the paint bucket on another layer, and I'll make it the color I want. So, like I said, I'll go for a nice light blue in the color range of just light blue. And I'll have my layer, I'll go to my Gaussian Blur. Oh my god, that looks awful. I'm going to change it back. And this is how you actually get the nice Burry effects you may see in some other games. It looks great. Merge it down, it'll become 7. And then we'll call this our Energy 2 Bar. Now you don't want to transform anything until you've finally decided you're going to oh, do this or do that. And depending on what you actually want to happen, going to want to change things the way you want to transform things. Now this one here I'm going to transform the exact same way I'm going to transform these ones. So I feel like it will be okay to go to another layer and do whatever. But the thing is if they're individual elements you don't really want to do this. In fact I wouldn't actually do this the way I'm doing it. What I'll do is I'll try to just select them. I'll add another layer, add another layer. And what I'll do is I'll go back to this layer here. And if this is my star, I'm going to choose a car color for the star. And that'll be like a yellow, a nice tingy yellow. I'm going to get the paint bucket. I'm going to paint this. Add another layer. And that's purple, so I'll go for a pink. I'll paint this. Add another layer, which will be above this 10. And I'll paint this one whatever color I want. I'll just go for a nice tinge of green. Then what we can do, with those layers still selected, we can go to our blurs, Gaussian blur, and transform it the way we want it to look. 
want to look like this. And you also don't want to be repeating the same gauge and blue all the time. It will eventually get boring. So you need to start changing your methods if you decide, hey, I'm going to use the gauge and blur. It, it's not a very good idea to keep using the same effect all the time. I'm going to just try a surface blur. No, nope, I don't like that effect, so I'll go and look at the photo, and I'll find Sharpen. I'll try this out. What does this do? It gives us some new triangles to our edge. Okay, so let's go and soften the portrait. I might go back to my blurs now and change it the way I want it to be transformed. Get the Bari effect that I want. Like I said, you don't want to use the same thing all the time. You want to try new elements. Because now it has a new element, a new element, it looks a little bit different. It's slightly different, and it makes it a bit more nicer when you do have those different elements involved rather than just one element all the time. It's much more nicer. So what I'll do now is move these down. This becomes a one bar. This becomes a two bar. This one here become eleven to eight become a bar three. Now that we have these elements, we're gonna have to somehow import them. The trick to this is, you know, you got your do not change. We're gonna save this first. What we're going to do is we're going to just merge this down. Going to go select everything, Control C, make a new file, Control V, and you have the same elements again. Now, though this is still actually incomplete, we can say to ourselves, okay, I'm happy with this. I'm going to save this as a new PNG, and this PNG is going to not be called what I want to call it. We're going to call this exactly what I want to call it, because it's like, you want to call it something, you should not call it just anything. This is a called a foreground, foreground, and I'll call it a facing, because it is basically a facing. It goes over top of just about everything else, and it's not our exact baseline. So now that we have that one made, we can undo the move that we just did here. And it should have our background still here. Or now it is there, it's back. So if I turn that off, it looks terrible. So what I can do next is here's my energy. And I want everything to line up exactly where I want it to in the program. So I click Control V on this one. And here's my elements that I've already got. And I'm gonna file and I'll save as. And this one here is going to be called my energy underscore bar. And I'll call this underscore green, green free, and yellow one. But I would like to note something. This is not going to be very efficient. It's not going to work the way I want it to. Now, that being said, it's never going to line up the way I want it to in the program. So the trick to this is, if you want it to line up nice and neatly, you're going to have to do a little bit of work to get this to work. So you're going to have to find out where you want it in rotation. Now I'm going to transform it to this position because this position works. At least it'll be close to what I want it. And if I save as, it'll be the same PNG, but I'm just going to call it rotation. You'll understand what I mean to this rotation once we get into actually putting things together. I'm missing some other elements, but we'll figure this out eventually. We've got the energy out of the way. I want to go to my health bar. Now my health bar is going to be fine, but the problem is it's not fine. Now the reason it's not fine 
is because of the way it's going to transform. Everything's going to transform in a weird way. So the way I've been actually telling you to do things has actually been wrong all along. You haven't realized it, and I probably haven't told you why you have to do it a different way. If I make a new, this is what your health bar should look like and how other elements should look. I don't like how it's done what it's done, so I'm going to go... I'm going to use a tool called invert, which is invert selection, and I'm going to delete the outsides. Now, the reason you want to do it actually this way is because then this bar is going to be the only thing that transforms. And with this, we're going to have to change this again. Oh, it's not going to work. Not the way I want it to. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go file, save as, PNG. It's going to be called tutorial. Yo, health. I'm not going to involve every single element of how to transform things, but it's possible to learn this stuff as you need to. So like I said, we're going to have to probably come back here and redo this one anyway, because I forgot to actually include a reason why you got to transform this a different way. Now this is all going to be nice and all. But the reason we've got to transform in this different way is because it's not going to run at the rate we want it to. So if we go to the image and we crop the selection file, save as, and your new image name is going to be... It's going to be underscore cropped.png. You'll understand once we get into putting the elements together. I apologies for any delays and how long this video already is. But you're going to actually be able to make a GUI in the very end the way you want it to. So we're going to go here and we got our elements all saved. We're going to select the next element and the next and the next and the next. However, I'm only going to do just one more because it's probably going to be the only one we're going to have to worry about in any t time of the day. Okay, so now that the bar's selected, I'll just hit Control C. I'll go New. I'm gonna delete this background, paste here, and delete this one. And the reason I want to delete this one is because I actually don't want this one. Now this is my bar. It goes all the way around. I'm gonna file. I'm gonna save as a PNG, and this is gonna be called the Energy Two Bar. This one's going to transform differently to the health and to the energy bar, green, free, yellow, one, rotation, cropped. Now, I'm just going to leave it that with the transforms and everything else. You can turn off the bars that you've already done. Now we've got the last element we haven't actually done yet. So what we'll do is we're going to just make it as we need to or just do it now. I'm going to go and make a new layer. I'm going to pick a color. This color is going to be a gray. I'm going to transform it as I want to. It's a bit dark. I want it to be nice and light, but not too light. I'm going to leave it at that. So what I can do now that we have this layer, is I can crop this by Control c New. OK. Paste. File save as and we can save this as whatever we want to call it because now that you see these holes these holes you can put anything you want into this base background so okay we're gonna save this as the actual base underscore background because this is gonna be the first thing you see out of everything however like I said there's things you might want to do so I'm just gonna go and use the paint bucket I'm gonna paint these elements the way I want to you can change them if you want. You can do whatever you like. But I'm just going to paint them like so. Now, that is your actual background that you want. However, there is one mistake still being made. It's now bigger than what this one is. And you have these corners here that you will lose your quality on. So what do we do about this? Well, we can go to the bar. The do not change. We should be able to select those corners. Or the whole edge. 
we can go and use this control C paste it and delete it and that's what we want we're gonna save that now it's done so we're gonna use those little elements that we just made in unity and here's our unity project so background basics is what this is called we've got our canvas tutorial we've got a basic background basics and now we're gonna have to go to the GUI I'm gonna call this new folder I'm gonna make in here and it's gonna be called hmm tutorial underscore GUI now we have the tutorial GUI made we're gonna go and grab our tutorial GUI elements which are PNG and we're gonna grab all these PNG elements and nothing else so we're gonna just hold them there drag them in and there's our elements now we have our elements the background basics is gonna be your background here so you wanna match things up the way you want them now we're gonna set the native size <clears throat> and I apologize for my voice being a bit out of whack I have no idea why I apologize and then we have our slider which is one of our elements now I'm just going to rename this one and this is going to be just called the energy to bar okay so we have our energy to bar what we're going to do is we're going to delete the handle because we do not want the handle slide we're going to go to the fill we're going to change the fill the UI sprite for this one is the energy bar 2 but because it's inactive, you cannot see what it's done. So I'm going to just turn it to one value. And it's got no native size. So I'm going to set the native size. This is the native size. Okay, so something seems a bit wrong here. And honestly, it should not have transformed the way it did. I'm going to go to my scene. I'm going to press W. I'm going to transform it where I want it roughly. That's roughly where it's going to be. We have another layer that we haven't actually added yet. And this new layer is a UI. It's going to be an image. And it's going to be the foreground. Now the reason I'm going to call it foreground now is because it's just going to get a bit dodgy in the end if we don't actually start just adding the foreground. Now we're going to set the native size there's our native size and as you see things lined up are things that did not line up so we're going to go to the energy bar now we can line it up as we want to and honestly I want this to be above so I'm going to change this I'm going to put the background basics over here I'm going to drag these elements into the foreground and now they're above now if something still looks wrong with my energy bar too which actually doesn't look like it's right anymore I'm gonna fix that up here's my energy bar move it around I can zoom in and also if you see this um, these lines and they're annoying you can just turn them off by visualize I'm gonna line it up to the corner and I'm gonna line up as good as possible That's about the best I'm going to get it. I'm going to leave it at that. This corner seems a bit messed up for some reason. So I'll just square it up. Now it's perfect. Now that's fine. And I'm happy with that. Now, do we want this side to be interactable? No. I don't know why it just does this. It does it all the time. Uh, I do remember how to fix it to some extent. And that was the height and the width. Now, the width you want to set to 20 and the height you want to set to 1. This fixes this issue and it will stop transforming the way it does. And if it's still not right, you can change the width to 10. It should eventually fix itself. And if it's not working, then just set it to 2. A 1 to 2 ratio, go to your fill, and you set the native size, and it should fix it again. 
This gets a bit annoying to have to fix all the time, but something you got to expect when things break. Turn it on and off. It's still not right. Okay, I'll make this a 1-1. One, one. I'll leave it alone. I'm happy with this. I'll just have to deal with it. You just play around the width and height settings on the actual bar itself, and it should eventually fix it up. I'm going to go to a new slider now. I'm just going to ignore the other ones. I'm going to call it health. Now what I'll do is I'll drag in two without the handle. Delete the handle slide. Go to the fill area. Drag in your UI tutorial health slider. Move it up. Set the native size. And there's your native size. Just remember, you're going to probably want to remember this all the time. Is change the width and the height to 1-1. One, one. And that should, in theory, fix it completely once you've done it. So if you click on the interactable, it shouldn't transform anymore. So you want to set the width and the height to 1-1 one, one, so it doesn't transform at all. Because if you set this to 2, it will transform it to 2. So I'm going to set this to 1 again, and it will leave it at 1. It will leave it to the scale of those values. It's really awkward that they didn't actually set that in the first place, but it works. That's working backwards, I believe. I'm going to have to fix them when I get the chance. If we have a handle, we want to get rid of the handles. This next one, I'm just going to call this the one bar that's going to drive us nuts is the energy underscore bar. So I'm going to do this. And these other ones, I'm going to disable them because I don't want to use them at all. Now we've got the energy bar set up, we're going to set up the fill area. The fill is going to be the UI sprite. The UI sprite is going to be the native size. But first of all, just so we don't have any issues, I'm going to set the height and the width to 1-1. One, one. The fill is going to be set to native size. It cannot transform now. Oh, we see a problem. So what's the problem? Well, I'm going to try and rotate it degrees and put it in the exact position I want it to sit in. It's close enough. I'm going to deal with that. And if I go back to the energy bar, I should be able to press interactable and turn off all this stuff like the color tint to none. I don't want a color tint. I don't want no automatic. If I change this, it shouldn't transform it. So fill rect transform should not actually do what it did. I don't know why this is really glitching out like it's doing. It shouldn't actually do that. This is the filled. Now these all these bars that we've built are actually filled because they actually are filled bars. The problem is they automatically set to radial, so I forgot about this. And it's going to be vertical because it's hor it's on the vertical plane. Uh, no, horizontal, sorry. I made another mistake. Horizontal is the horizon value, and vertical is from Earth to Moon. Now, this energy bar over here, this one's going to stay as it is. It's going to transform as it says. It's not actually transforming the right way. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to set to 100 value. It's going to have 100 of a value. But this one here has to be set from to field. Then when we go back, it should transform to nothing. There should be nothing left. As you see, we're starting to put something together that actually looks great. Not perfect, it doesn't have its elements in it, but it does look good. Now, if I slide this one, it should set to zero, and the last one should not set to any zero, I don't believe. But you're going to learn something about this. If you look at the slider very closely, you'll see that it's transforming on an angle. It's not straight, it's on an angle. So when I fill it, when I'm at the end, 0.196, it's actually parallel to this line and the gap is almost perfect. That's why you want to make the image the way I did. If you use anything else like these 
other bars, it's not going to work. Not the way that you expect, because they'll transform way too much, and your values are going to be just way off. So you just need to set them the way that you did. So now we have this GUI interface started. I'm going to start linking things up to my player. Here's my player. I'll fix this up later. But here's my player. And down here we have a mist energy slider. So this is the slider on the outside I'm going to use. And then we have an energy bar slider, which is this one here. And I'm going to link those up. So we find the energy bar. The energy bar is the energy bar slider. Sorry, I made a mistake. It happens, guys. I apologize. It happens to the best of us. And then we're going to find the energy bar slider. This is the energy bar slider. If I'm not mistaken. And we're going to find the energy bar 2. And we're going to drag the energy bar 2 into the energy bar slider. Sorry. I've made another mistake. Ha! Huh. Too many mistakes in one shot. Line them up to where you actually want them. Then when we play the game... We should still get the message and things to transform. Now, this is a bit broken. We're going to have to find out why this is broken. We're going to have to find out what's actually going on. So, first of all, I'm going to fix the health. It's apparently set to zero. I'm going to give it a value of 100. Now, if something's wrong here, the width can be set to 2 because it's length. And whatnot transforms a bit interestingly. Feel doesn't look right. So if you have a problem, you can just transform the width until it matches up what you want it to match up. So this is actually meant to be 20, honestly. As far as I'm aware, that is the right number for this. Everything changes just as you do things, so I'm just going to not save it. I'm going to be fine. That should be in the right position and everything. Okay. So now what is going wrong with the energy bar slider? We'll ignore the energy fuel. This should be when full. Set native size. The problem is probably with the energy bar. We haven't set the width and the height. Okay, that's fine. And it's just transformed again. So, the main problem is it's taking the width, taking the height, and it's not transforming the way it should. So what I'll do is this should be probably 20. That's what I found the normal number was for this. For this to work, it had to be 20. It should be able to line just up perfectly. And now this is going to work again. So when we run around, the energy bus goes down. Maybe not perfectly. But it works. You can press R, and you see that other bars working. It's taking 10 off every time. And it moves nice and beautifully. And when it's empty, it comes back here, and it's done. So, these scripts are set up to reset values and change things. And you can see this is just not perfect, but it is close enough. And this is your GUI. Now, if you don't like the size of this, you can go to Canvas Tutorial, I believe. You should be able to scale it from the scenic view. If that doesn't work, we can just go down to basic, the background basic, and it should transform everything as you need it to. Then we can go back to the game scene and check out, oh, this is a bit too small. I'll drag out my scene over here on another screen, which actually doesn't really work, but I'll show you guys anyway. I can take the background basic, and while I'm in here, I can check, oh, what do I want the size to look like? Where do I want this to be positioned at? And I'll place it here. And then I can set my anchor points to, oh, I want this not centered to the middle. I want it centered up here. So if I was to change the screen size, it should anchor to the very middle top sections. And it should always stay about the same set distance apart. Now, I believe that's all I got really for this tutorial. I'll ignore about the gear, because that's awesome gear anyway. But if I change this to maximize and play and play it again, everything is working. I can press R, I can refill my energy bar when I'm out of energy, which it transforms at the wrong rate apparently, but that's okay for this application because it looks great. 
but you can see it empties, it does everything it's meant to do. Health doesn't work in this project, so I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys who are looking at making your own GUIs. I should have really done the star for you guys so you understand how that one will work, but it'll be just about exactly the same as the blue bar on the outside. It'll just be attached to the star slot. You may have to line things up, which does get annoying. I know no efficienter ways than what I've done today. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and possibly share this with your friends for future videos that may occur in future. Thanks again. Have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Bye.